Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Real Stories of Success. I am beyond excited to sit down and talk to somebody I have just begun getting to know, but her story is absolutely amazing. She's got a wealth of information and knowledge from this industry. So, Austin, what are we working on today? We've got Rhonda Cooper here, and I've known her for years. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, 20 plus uh, year career you're going to hear about today. Uh, top 10 MyBoard Realtors. Um, one of my favorite parts is she has background in both new construction and uh, the real estate side of things. And get this, in her first year, she did 100 plus transactions. Welcome, Rhonda. Thank you. Glad to be here. So, Rhonda, let's kind of circle back to the very beginning of this, because every story of success has a beginning. Mm -hmm. And yours, you, you, you've experienced so much in this industry. You've learned from so many people and you've taken on so much responsibility. I want to start at the very beginning of what brought you into this industry. Kind of walk us through those early years, if you don't mind. So I originally got my real estate license in 1998. Um, I was a mom of four kids and um, I had actually my degrees in elementary education and I had an in-home daycare because I had decided that the rat race of trying to work with kids and all that was just it was just a lot. My husband and I were both working. So um, a friend basically talked me into getting my real estate license. So I took the really fast like two weeks crazy course um, and signed up for my real estate test on the, the Saturday after I passed the course and actually had appointments for that weekend. So I kind of had to yeah. pass my test. <laughs> yeah. So I did and um, did, did it for a little bit, but I ended up going in the direction of new construction. Um, the friend who recruited me, um, I actually talked him into letting me job share. Um, I didn't think they would. We, it took like six months to talk him into it because I could not. I, I had four kids. So mm -hmm. I ended up doing it. And I promised him, if you let us job share another partner that's a friend and a partner like a colleague today, we will we will be two people for the price of one. We will you will not regret it. And that's what started it all. Yeah. Not taking no for an answer. That's even better. I love that part of it. So, okay, how did you do? Uh, everybody out there is maybe new to the industry, or they've been in a year or two. Talk to those those people. How did you go hundred units plus your first year? So, I um, I partnered with some builders. I partnered with. I wasn't afraid to take on. Um, basically any buyers I mostly did buyers which was even harder because I was scared to do existing like I didn't know how to I I honestly I didn't know yeah. how to do listings and I I was on my own I didn't have anybody I wasn't I was just with a little mom and pop broker I was his only agent he just basically held my license so I had to teach myself everything I knew so I drove everywhere I drove from Sheridan to Shelbyville to Danville to, I, I didn't care and I didn't also only look for um, expensive houses. Um, one of my <laughs> very first houses was like, well, one of my first listings was like a $45,000 house. And it was the hardest transaction for the fewest, littlest amount of money. Yep. Um, but that transaction, the, the, the kids of those, those people that sold the house ended up one bought a $400,000 house and one bought a $300,000 house. So by not saying, I'm not going to work with you because you don't have an expensive house, um, the, it just it paid off. It was I, I, crazy. <laughs> but, 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 but seriously, I, th I think that's something that so many people can take a huge lesson away from right there. I mean, A, you just said that you didn't discriminate against location. I mean, not discriminate. That's, that's, that's the wrong word. Right. But, but you didn't shy away from any location because you had to go make it happen that first year, right? Mm -hmm. And then once once that followed, you really, you, you didn't turn anybody away and you provided that opportunity to help. And here's what's beautiful about the business of real estate, especially or say, you know any sales industry. If you do it for long enough, you have the opportunity to help those people again and again and again and again and it sounds like that you know that $45,000 sale turned into a gigantic opportunity a handful of years later it was huge and it's 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 proven true you know through the years um one of my very very best customers I got who was upset at about a situation that she had and I met her at an open house and they ended up using me and I've probably I think maybe I'm 12 transactions in from her and her friends and family she just sends so if you if you treat people well and you you help people regardless of what they can give you in return mm -hmm. it pays off 
it really does pay off. Yeah, and that, and that's one thing that I, I truly do love about you too, is you're saying you did this in your first year, but you've actually done it for all the years I've known you. Like you ne- you still probably wouldn't turn down a $45,000 house. No. And and that's just you because you really truly enjoy what you do and, and you do love the people that you do it for. And so um, that that's a big difference than being transactional. Right? It, it, it really, it is, I, I feel like, you know, people, you invest in people, you invest your time and your energy. Um, and you do things right and with the right character. And I do think it pays off. I don't think it has to be a dog eat dog world to yeah. be good in business. I completely agree with you on that. And I think so many people, especially on our side of the table, I, I mean, they, they, they think they have to go win. They think they have to go beat somebody up and they think they have to do business, you know, the way they see it done on TV. And it's just not that case. I mean, it's how do you find a win win for everybody here? So everybody walks away happy. Heck, 100%. that's why we're doing this show, right? <laughs> yeah, truly. I mean, we're out there trying to help people. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 that's 100%. it. 100%. So tell us a little bit about you know you mentioned that when you got started you hung your license with somebody and you really had no sense of direction you just started doing 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 and obviously there's a ton of learning that comes with that and some challenges that come with that but what about maybe some people in your life that maybe stepped in and said you know what Rhonda, you're doing awesome but what if we shift over here what if we do this was there any of those aha moments or people in your life that really just said oh my gosh this was a perspective shift that changed everything for you um I would say a lot of different people um, through my life, you know, especially, well, in the last year, I've really noticed this, but I didn't really couldn't put my finger on it. But, you know, they say if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> Definitely. And, you know, there are a lot of times where, you know, I've been the one, the big brain, and I don't want to be the big brain. So um, there's a lot of people, you know, throughout my life that have challenged me, um, challenged my thinking. When I first started out, I would, you know, I would find people. I, I went to one colleague that had been a partner and she had been doing things a little longer than me. And I said, I want to pay you. What's your hourly rate? And she told me, I said, I will pay you. I need you to teach me everything from walking in the door about listings like I need you to teach me all of these things and she did Um, and when I was with um, the builder that I was with one of the things that my favorite thing about them was they were so people and personal people growth oriented Mm -hmm. we were always you know um, having like the person ahead of me was grooming me to take their spot and then I was grooming someone below me to take my spot so Um, That was a really big deal for me, and it really taught me a lot about, you know, when I get into a uh, position of leadership, what am I going to do to help that next person? Leaders so. create leaders create <laughs> leaders. So it's uh, it, it's amazing how that works when you invest in the people that you're working with. 100%. How all of a sudden everything changes for the yes, better. Yes, it does. You just said two really important things, right? So you were willing to spend some money to improve yourself, but you were also willing to spend some time to improve somebody else. Yes. Like how cool is that? Yeah, I I think you know. Real estate is my business, but people are my passion, and that is that is true. And I love, love, love to invest in other people like people invested in me. Like lately, um, a, a mentor um, passed away lately, and, you know, you sit and you think about w- how your life has changed, whether that person knew it or didn't know it, um, because a person can be a mentor without knowing that they're being a mentor. But when you sit down and think about how much your life, your family, your situation has changed because of people, um, I want to be that for other people. Yeah. Well, you've been that for me. (laughs) Uh, For those that don't know that, uh, Rhonda actually gave me my first job in the industry. She's the reason I'm sitting here. So then I tried to recruit him later and he's like, no, I got to start this company (laughs) called Fairway, but I'm glad he did. Yeah. 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 So speaking of, of being an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. right? That's one of my favorite things about Rhonda is she's an entrepreneur. So you recently took that jump into kind of starting your own franchise and, Mm -hmm. and, uh, building out a group of realtors and, and you even have one of my favorite off offices in, in mm-hmm. town, down uh, around Fountains, or uh, I'm sorry, around um, what Mass, am I? Ab. Mass yeah. Ab. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So talk us, walk us through that. So um, as I mentioned before, I was independent when I first started and more senses of the word than you can imagine. I'm a very <laughs> independent person. Um, bossy. I've been called bossy, been <laughs> called stubborn, all kinds. I don't like to be told what to do, um, but I like to learn. And Um, I started my own company in 2013 and I was independent um, for four years 
and I was a one-man show for those first couple of years. And um, about mid to end 2014, um, a friend called me and said, I was at lunch, and she said, hey, um, I quit my job today. I signed up for real estate school. Will you teach me everything you know? And I'm like, I come on. So I love that. Uh, I'm I like, love okay. That. Um, and then very shortly after that, one of my daughters, um, the least likely daughter that I would have ever expected <laughs> to make this call, said, Mom, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I want to uh, get my real estate license. And she had just recently graduated from college and was doing work in her, you know, in her field. And so um I and then the first person's husband decided to get his license so I inadvertently started having this team without any infrastructure because you know when I was on my own I had enough knowledge experience I could fly by the seat of my pants I could just I mean and I did and and I was successful um crazy crazy as it seems but I was so now I had um this group of people who were depending on me to help them get good so I did it for a couple of years um on my own and I started getting recruited um uh, by a couple of companies here in town that were seeing our numbers and wanted, you know, me to either come manage for them um, or whatever. But Weikert Realtors um, approached me, and I at first I was like, nope, not not doing it. I'm independent. I like what I do. But as I really started challenging myself, I realized that in order for me to grow as a person, grow as a business owner, and help my people to grow, I needed. Um, I needed some processes, I needed some systems, some support, even for myself. So um, I joined in November of 2017, been the best decision. Weikert is a privately owned, um, one of the largest in the country, and just full of knowledge and resources. And it's it's been great for me and for my team. So I wanna take that, um, you just kinda led into the next place I wanted to go with this. And as your team was, you know, just happened to start growing organically, you should with me on the phone a, a, a few weeks ago that you just recently got into this massive personal development, mm-hmm. you know, push and, and, you know, you would, you know, you said a few minutes ago that you kind of did everything before you kind of flew by the seat of your pants. You always worked mm-hmm. hard. You're always, you know, engaged with people and doing all the right things. But then all of a sudden there was a change and you started really investing in yourself. You started really pushing yourself to learn. Would you mind kind of unboxing that for us and kind of walk us through that journey and how that's helped you develop into the leader that you are today? Sure. So when I was with the builder, that was a massive um, focus was like learning, growing, you know, getting better all the time. And when I opened my own company, um, I'm a very competitive person, um, love, love to win, love to do well, but I was kind of on my own and I really didn't have anybody per se you know, challenging me to do this. I mean, I was competitive still, but more just against my own numbers and things like that. So about a year ago, I, I decided, you know, if I'm, I'm 54 years old and, um, I'm not getting any younger. And I just decided, you know, you can't keep going and just doing things the way you're doing it. If you really, really want to, um, leave an impact, leave a legacy and things like that. So I started with one thing. I started drinking water. I'm a massive sweet. I was a massive sweet tea drinker. I have a very addictive personality. Thank God I never got into any addictions that are the kind that destroy lives (laughs) because seriously, I mean, it could have been bad. I have a very addictive personality and I just decided I'm going to start trying to drink water. And mind you guys, I probably... I probably didn't drink eight ounces of water a day, period. And so I just started with one thing. I started that. And then I started, you know, reading a lot more. Um, I started, you know, habit stacking. I started saying, okay, what's one more thing I can do that will be better? And I believe, you know, if we don't take care of us and our bodies and we only have one, um, we can't be any benefit to other people. And I you know, not just my team, but my family, my kids, I wanted to be, you know, um, I wanted to be there for them. So I, I get up, I go to bed, I get up, I read, I, I just, I just 
started and I have not been a good habit person my whole life. 53 years of my life were not good, but the fifth, my, this last year has the, been good. Yes. Yeah, I love that theory of <laughs> habit stacking, right? So one good habit leads to the next one, which leads to the next one, which mm-hmm. leads to the next one. And all of a sudden you've got 15, 20 that you're doing that you weren't doing yeah. a year before. So. Well, and I think what's important about, uh, about that is we all think we want to go from, you know, maybe there's, you know, there's six areas of life and maybe there's three of them that you want to improve on. Well, so many people try to do all three at once. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, we've got these habits that are already ingrained in our mind Our you know, 80% of our, of what we do every day is one. running from our subconscious. And until you can rewire your brain, that old habit exists and you can start a new one, but it takes a consistent period of time of doing that habit day in and day out to just truly get your mind off autopilot to where that's just what you do. You probably don't right. even reach for sweet, you know, sweet tea anymore. Right. No, I haven't had a sweet tea in I, almost a year and, and I don't even care. Like I can go yeah. through Chick-fil-A now and not get sweet tea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, same with fast food. You know, I used to live on fast food and I just, I just don't now. Like you really can retrain your brain. Your brain is so freaking powerful Agreed. and people do not understand how much of their life is habit and how you, you know, I'm sure you've probably read the book, The Power of Habit. And it, it was it was eye opening for me of how you can't change the cue that's going to chart, you know, get you to. But you can change what you do. And it is unbelievable how you can rewire your brain. And, and, and I think that's really what it takes. So and, you know, everybody says it takes 21 days to build a habit. Right. That's not true. Mm-hmm. It takes 21 days to develop that new habit. But the thing that people forget is the old habit is still there. It takes about two months, 67 days, I think exactly, yes. to of doing the same thing day in and day out to truly just kill that old habit to, you know, make sure that road doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. But that's where so many people struggle is, you know, they're three weeks in and think back to the last time you wanted to work out or try right. anything new. You get three weeks in, you're gung ho, you start seeing some results and then it gets easier. Oh, I can skip a day. I can skip another day. And then before you know it, a week later, you're not even doing that habit anymore. You think that that is so true. Like I haven't been a part, like because of my metabolism, anyone who knew me for the last 53 years would think, oh, she works out. She doesn't yeah no. Uh, no but I I decided in January I hired a personal trainer um because I don't like to be told what to do but I need this I yeah. need that mm-hmm. structure um and then I decided you know my daughter was like hey let's run a 10k and I'm like mm, okay I'll do that and then she calls me up well the 10k was sold out so we're signing up for a half marathon I'm like <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so I ran my first mile February 1st and I ran a half my well, ran slash walked a half marathon on February 24th. Congrats. And the funny thing is, I mean, you, and t- today, now, if I go more than one day without a 30 minute workout, I start to freak out. Mm-hmm. Not because I'm obsessed with it or I love it, but I know the power of that habit thing and how you can get out of it. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going back. Mm-hmm. Not going back. I love that. I, that no truer words have been spoken. Uh, let, let's shift a little bit. Let's talk to some of maybe the managers out there, right? So you've built this really cool group of people that we already talked about. Who? What are you looking for when you're hiring somebody? What are some of those characteristics and maybe mm-hmm. some of those habits that they might already mm-hmm. have? So um, I have right now four full-time agents, a couple part-time, and I've just recently hired for people. I have some that are still in class and things like that. And when I am interviewing someone, first of all, you know, I don't even know if you guys know what precious moments are, but there are these little figurines. And I always like to say, I'm not trying to collect agents like precious moments. My goal is not just herding them in and out. Somebody yeah. that I interviewed the other day told me that a big company in town, like that, that he's seen like a hundred agents come through since he was started like four years ago and I'm just like wow Um, it's just that's just not that's a great strategy but it's not a strategy for me and what I'm looking for when I hire people I tell them if all you want is a broker who's going to show you the tactical things about being in real estate and be good I'm like I could do that I'm I was really good agent I can do that but that's not 
what I want. I I want people who want personal growth, who want professional growth, who are willing to do things outside of just learning the basics. Although the basics are very, mm-hmm. very important. You know, I believe when you improve one area of your life, all the areas of your life, you know, yeah. they talk about the boats when, when the tide comes in, you know, mm-hmm. they all come in. And so I believe if you, if you get good in one area, it's going to make a difference in another area. So I'm looking for people who want growth. I'm looking for people who want accountability. You know, a lot of people get into this business because it's flexible and flexible is true, but if you're too flexible, then you don't make a living. So you've got to be willing to do, you know, the work. And it's true, you gotta work smarter, but you gotta work hard too. You can't just work smart. You, You, this business is hard. And so you, you know, if you're not willing to be a hard worker, then you're just not going to be a fit for our team. And that's okay. There's another team out there that might yeah. be a good good fit for you. Building culture, mm-hmm. yep. right? Culture is huge yeah. in my office. Yeah. Huge. We're big. It's a big deal. Well, I, and I think that word gets used a lot, you know, today in business and in industry. You know, you know you've got to fit this culture. But I, I, I could not agree with it more, though. I say that to say this. I mean, you, you are a product of the people that you surround yourself with. And you've got one bad egg on your team. It's just, it's, you know, it's a disease almost within the entire, you know, company and keeps you from you know really growing. I, I know I've struggled with that in the past where it's like there's a bad egg and it's it, it's just hard to work past that. Somebody that refuses to grow, somebody that you know says that they want to do all the right things, but then 10 days later, they still haven't done the first one. Right. You know, it's hard. So how do you deal with that you know, as a manager now, and mm-hmm. you've been a manager a long, long time, how do you, you know, really work with that person that's maybe struggling to take that step or yeah, I guess kind of, right. um, you know, walk us through that. I think, you know, one of my, um, it's a good trait but it can also be and not a good trait is I want everyone to succeed I want everyone to be as excited about life about business about everything as I am and it's just simply not true there are going to be people that aren't and I think you have to be as diligent and disciplined about de-hiring as you are about hiring I think you try you give that person every opportunity but at some point if you are allowing one person to affect everyone else all the other people they're looking at you and they're looking yeah. what's going on and you you just you can't do that and it's it's hard i i struggle because i sometimes feel like i failed if i can't get that person to do such you know whatever it is but you cannot want it more for them than they want it for themselves yeah. you cannot and that's the hardest thing for me because I feel like I've failed sometimes, but sometimes they just, they need to go. They need to go find somewhere that's a better fit for them. And that's, you know, just gonna, and I wish them the best. I I thank them for their service. I wish them the best. And I say, you know, this is, you know, this is going to be the best for all. And I've done that with somebody that's doing very, very well. I mean, I've, I've had to do that in the past with people all through my career that maybe they were doing really, really well financially and I had to take a hit for a minute, but sometimes you have to prune branches for a tree to grow really big. That's you it. have to be okay with it. I've been guilty of that too. <laughs> I, I love that, the, mm-hmm. the pruning. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about, you know, we're, we're always in an industry that's changing, right? Uh, is there anything out there that's keeping you up at night? Is it iBuyers? Is it new technology? Is it rising prices? Is, you know, what, is there anything out there that, that, you know, people should be on the lookout for and maybe planning ahead on? So this might not be the answer that you guys are thinking, but nothing keeps me up at night. Nothing. I I go to bed at the same time every night. I get up at the same time every morning, seven days a week, unless there's some crazy, you know, I'm at a concert or something. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I used to stay up a lot at night. I used to um, cram per se, uh, but, or, you know, worry, but I... I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to do the thing that I feel called to do. And, you know, things come and go. Disruptors come and go. I want to be the disruptor. I want to be the thing that keeps people up at night. So I go to sleep and I wake up the next morning and I say, what do I need to do today to move to the next level, to move to the next step? What do I need to do for my people? Who do I need to be on for today? Um, So not very much keeps me up at night. 
That's beautiful, though. <laughs> I, I, I mean, that sounds to me, Rhonda, I mean, you're just simply somebody who knows where they're going and you know who you're trying to impact in the world and you're getting it done. Mm-hmm. That's that's what's so encouraging is 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 you've really just identified this. You know what path you're on and you're just living it every single day. And, you know, the consistency of going to bed at the same time every night is so powerful. You know, I, I love to stay up you know at night and have these long whiteboard sessions mm-hmm. and map out, you know, what I want to do next year and all this. But man, when you're up till one o'clock at night, it's really hard to get up at five and go work out the next day mm-hmm. and, you know, keep those good habits in line every day. So it makes it it's it's been str- I, I have alarms on my phone for lots of things in my <laughs> life now. I figured out don't laugh, but I figured out um, Brendan Burchard talked about how you can name alarms and I didn't realize you could name an alarm in your phone. It, instead, it doesn't just go off because half the time I would put an alarm on like, what was I supposed to remember? <laughs> but now like get ready for bed, turn off yeah. your technology. You know what I mean? Like I have alarms and it it's that habit thing. Like until it gets to be ingrained in me, I've got to, you know, and even when it does, sometimes I'll be working. I was doing something last night. My alarm went off. It's 945. I'm like, all right, I'm stopping. I'm going to go to bed. That's discipline right mm-hmm. there. I love that. I love that. Rhonda, wh- wh- what if anything next year, and I'm sure there's lots of things that, what are you really looking forward to? You know, we're wrapping up 2020 right now. What's on the horizon for you and your team? What are you guys really looking to make happen next year? So um, I think it's very applicable. 2020 vision is kind of a thing that a friend of mine just kind of threw out there. And I'm like, that's really good. My goal next year is to take my staff, take my 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 team and just hone in on really, really making them the very best. I want to be the team that people are like, oh, Rhonda Cooper's listings, her team, they're great when you close. Oh, Rhonda Cooper's transactions, even if they don't go smoothly, you know, they'll they'll figure it out. you know, Rhonda Cooper's, um, you know, she's, you know, you want to be on her team. You, you That's the team you want to be on. So my goal is to um, find a few more agents. I don't, I don't want tons, but I want, I want a few more, either brand new. I love, yeah. love brand new agents. I love teaching them from the very, very beginning. It's harder. A lot it's of a people lot won't yep. even hire brand new. There's a lot of companies out there that won't even hire brand new agents. I love brand new agents. Or agents have maybe been in the industry a year, and they it just isn't quite what they thought it was going to be. But it might not be that the industry is not what they thought it would be. It might be that they just don't have the right person that's helping them. So my goal is all people next year. Like I obviously want numbers, but my numbers are my people. If I if Love I that. get the right people, I'll get the right numbers. That's beautifully said. If someone's out there and you were just talking about you'd love to hire new people, right? There's probably a lot of newer uh, real estate agents listening to us right now. And what are you telling them, right? What do they need to know? What are some of those things that, that you would give um, as, as visions that these guys need to know? I think um, they need to understand that real estate is kind of like your own business. You're in business for yourself, but with me, not by yourself. So I think just understanding that I'm trying to help my people understand what it's like to kind of be an entrepreneur and own your own business. Um, And you have to you have to be willing to take a step back, to take a step forward. So I was talking to a friend yesterday and just talking about um, somebody who works for, I don't know, it was a cable company or something. And she was really couldn't believe how much how well they did. And I said, what's the most that they could do with that company? And she's like, oh, I think, you know, I think, you know, six figures is possible. And, you know, I think that people who really want to truly have a business where the possibilities are really unlimited, real estate is what it is, is that business. I mean, it really is. If you are willing to be disciplined, if you are willing to take coaching, if you are willing to do the things that the 99, we see the 1%, people see the 1% of what's going on. But they don't see Jared James talks about the 99%. That's all the things that happen behind the scenes that people are doing. Um, so it can be glamorous, but you know, you have to be willing to put in the work 
in order to be successful in this mm-hmm. business. So. And, you know, I think something you just said there, you know, helping people find the right path, because, you know, there's not a lot of transparency when you get into this business. You know, you could go to broker A, B, C, D, and E, and F, and they're all very, very different, while HGTV doesn't tell you any of that. HGTV shows that 1% of sexy, glamorous life that, you know, being a real estate agent is, and a touch of the drama of, uh, you know, negotiation, but they don't really dive into any of that. And, you know, and as you said, surrounding yourself with the right team of people is huge. What can somebody maybe new getting into the industry what questions should they be asking people that they're sitting down with to determine, is this a good fit for me? Because I, 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 I've interviewed hundreds of people in my life and I just, people walk in and they don't have a clue what they're walking into, I feel. Well, I think people, the thing they think that they're supposed to ask is, okay, what's my split? All yeah. right. And you can't buy groceries with a split. 100% of zero is still zero. Yep. It, it is. And I think the questions that people need to be asking are, you know, what specific tools do you have to make me successful? What um, training do you have to make? What are you, you the broker, yeah. going to do to invest in me? Because I think, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, they just, they think, are you going to give me leads? And mm-hmm. what's my split going to be? But I can tell you that just getting leads is worthless yeah. if no one's teaching you what to do with those leads and showing you you know with my people okay you're going with me okay because i used to do this really really well so why don't you come with me the other thing is you know a lot of a lot of um realtors they don't they don't know anything about financing oh yeah i send them to the <laughs> bank i send yeah. them over to the bank to get pre-approved okay that's crazy to me the number one reason why people buy is because they find out they can, can. Yeah. so <laughs> and then you know i remember i think i told you this story when i very first started real quick you know one of my very first people um they were trying to buy this house and they had a $15,000 gift from a family member, but we could, I could not figure out because we used to qualify by hand. You know, we did the, how much you make and how much your debt. We did all that by hand yeah. back then. I, I knew that. If you had qualification sheets in your drawer, you were selling houses. And I couldn't figure out. And I remember calling my loan originator and she actually works for Austin now. Um, and I called her and I said, I, how can I not get these people qualified? You know, they've got 15 grand as a gift. And so she looks at him, she goes, tell them to pay that car off with the 15 grand instead of using it for down payment. And I was like, my oh bull. my gosh, this business is a puzzle. It's about figuring out, solving problems. Like, and, and the people who figure out how to solve those problems and get good at that, those are the people that are going to be. But a lot of brokers, they're not teaching that. No. They're not They're not explaining all that kind of stuff. And that completely opened my eyes to what kind of possibilities you can have. I mean, you. I could not say it any better. I mean, this business is truly solving a puzzle. It's like imagine pouring a thousand piece puzzle out onto the table and that's a transaction Every or a transaction. client. <laughs> and you got to figure it out without the box there to look at. Yes. And, and just like what you said, you don't know how to do this. And if you ever hear somebody, you know, you know if an agent ever says, oh yeah, I just sent him to my lender, like you said, you're missing out on everything. Because what if that lender doesn't have a program that can do their loan with their credit score or with right. that down payment? You have to be completely affluent to help somebody take that next step. And if you don't know what that piece of the puzzle is, you can't help at all. You, and, you can't, and you can't take no for an answer. You mm-hmm. know, you, they don't qualify. What would it take? What, yeah. how could, what would they, every, how, what can I do? Here's what we've got. You know, what could this person do? Or what would it take for them to be? You just, you just have to, it's like an onion. You just got to keep peeling the layers it. back. Right. A lot of times it's not no, it's, it's just not now. Not now. Yep. Yeah. Okay. When could it be, you know, and I, and I, you know, I meet with people and like back, that's another thing back in the day when I started, you know, I would meet with people that I knew could not buy right now. I would spend an hour of my time and I would say, I'm not a credit repair expert. But here, if you do these things, most likely in this period of time, you will be able to buy a house and then follow up with them. What's beautiful about that is maybe that person doesn't always end up buying a house from you, but they're the ones who always tell the most. 
because 100%. if you can take the time to help somebody when nobody else would take the time to help them, I mean, th- those those types of clients are always my strongest referral sources mm-hmm. year right. over year over year. Right. So, I love this story. Uh, to to finish this up, that's great. Um, so, tell our audience how people can get a hold of you. What's the best way? A lot of people are listening. If you're if you are watching, we're going to put your info um, up on the screen. But but tell those people that are just listening out there. So you can email me at Rhonda at coopergroupindy.com or my website is coopergroupindy.com. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Um, you can call my cell if you want. I'll put it in the, <laughs> no- I'll put it in the notes. All right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for thank being you. our guest. It's this been has great. been so educational. Now, that's it. And so for this edition of Real Stories of Success, you just heard from somebody I have, I'm going to definitely go out to lunch with and uh, pick her brain some more. I am so thankful for your time, Rhonda. Thank and uh, for this edition, be sure to uh, hit that like, comment, subscribe, all those buttons, share it on the socials, do everything you can. And if there's anything else you want to hear about from Rhonda, definitely reach out to her. And uh, that's it for this episode. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you.